Welcome to Education Forum. I'm Herman Badillo, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York. The improvement of education affects all New Yorkers. This program will focus on the key educational issues and challenges before us all. My guest today is Dr. Matthew Goldstein, who is the new Chancellor of the City University, uh, effective uh, September 1st, just started. Uh, and Dr. Goldstein was born in Manhattan, and he is a graduate of the City College, which uh, uh, makes him the uh, Chancellor, who is a graduate of City College, and me and, as Chairman of the Board of Trustees, another graduate of City College, so we have a real team uh, going here. And Dr. Goldstein, after graduating from City College, uh, majoring in uh, statistics and mathematics, got his doctorate at the University of Connecticut, and came back, at, taught at City University and other universities, and became the president of the Research Foundation, the acting vice chancellor for academic affairs of the City University, and the president of Baruch College, where he really uh, set an outstanding record, and he uh, has come back to us as chancellor. And I wanted him as chancellor because I believe that uh, we need someone at the City University who knows the city and who cares about the city and the students at the City University as well as the professors and the entire university. So Matt, uh, welcome and congratulations. It's good to be back, Herman. Right. Matt, tell us now that you are uh, the uh, official chancellor. What is your agenda for the next uh, couple of years? Well, you may remember, um, Herman, about uh, two years ago, I gave a speech at the Manhattan Institute, uh, which created a course correction for City University. And I talked about changing admission standards. I talked about ridding remediation from senior colleges. I talked about tiering the system. I talked about more entrepreneurial spirit. And when I read the Schmidt Report, which was a much more comprehensive uh, statement of an assessment of this university and the challenges it faced, it was very clear to me that that is a blueprint for a, um, a change in the culture of the university, a change in the manner in which we do business, and the change in the manner in which we provide resources for our students. So I see that really as a point of departure. This, uh, no, uh, the, the first problem that we have is the remediation resolution that right. was approved by the board earlier this year. And that resolution requires that we eliminate remedial education in stages with uh, uh, Baruch, Hunter, Queens, and Brooklyn beginning in the spring of next year, then other colleges in the uh, fall, and then ending up in the year 2001 with Medgar Evers and New York. Now, you were successful in eliminating remediation without a resolution when you were president of Baruch College. Would you tell us about that? Yeah, I, I th thought the problem was very, very clear and very fundamental, that if you want to build the stature of an institution, you have to start with taking very serious uh, changes uh, into consideration. And for me, it meant changing admission standards, working with our faculty to really do the due diligence on what is necessary to change admission standards and how that would affect the profile of your student population. So we did that several years ago and then we iterated again uh, each year. And we got to a point where the admission standards were at a sufficiently rigorous level that I, it said to me that there's absolutely no justification for giving remedial courses and we voided remedial courses from our curriculum. Now, the remediation resolution is being opposed by a number of groups and is now pending before the Board of Regents. And they argue that we should not eliminate remediation at the City University because practically every other university, including Harvard, has remedial education. What is your answer to that? Well, I think much of it is a matter of nomenclature and uh, uh, what you really believe is appropriate an appropriate mission for the senior colleges. For me, if you have a set of rigorous admission standards and you meet those admission standards as a student, it says to me that, that you are ready for college level work and that you should not have embedded into your curriculum remedial courses. Having said that, however, I think it's very clear 
that our senior colleges, as every university that I am connected or, or know fairly well, have academic support services that are critical for our students. And they would include things like tutorial services. They would include things like math labs and reading labs and writing labs. That is very much a fabric of all universities across the country. And we should have that at our senior colleges as well. What I take issue with is the notion of having remedial classes. I think that is antithetical to the very culture and fabric of what defines a mission for a senior college. So how do you answer those who talk about the theoretical, mathematical genius who is totally brilliant but somehow cannot pass the reading and writing test, and they say that that individual should not be deprived from being admitted to a senior college. We, we are now working with a whole set of programs that would be consistent with the overall intent and spirit of the 1999, January 1999 resolution that would permit opportunities for a student to avail themselves of a more advanced mathematical course while still being consistent with the notion of this uh, remedial program. Uh, I think that we are a smart enough university, we are a compassionate enough university, we are a university with great depth that we can think of ways of satisfying some of the, what I would call, outlying uh, observations in our students, and I think we'll be able to handle some of those issues. Now, the remediation resolution only affects the senior colleges. It does not correct. affect the community colleges. That is correct. So therefore, uh, we are not in any way eliminating the open admissions program, because that is primarily in the community colleges. Is that that correct? is correct. That is correct. Open admissions is an inviolate principle built into the very fabric and culture of this university. I know you deeply believe in it. I certainly believe in it. I wouldn't have come to City University if I thought I was going to officiate over the elimination of access to the institution. But what I talk about, Herman, is that I think we have to have access with restricted entry points. And restricted entry points means to me that we assess a student's ability, we place that student in the appropriate environment, and give them the greatest opportunity for success. But the gates will always be open for all students. And those gates will depend on what they bring to their educational background. Now, in order to uh, assess the students, uh, last month, September 27th board meeting, uh, we approved resolutions at the board that it would establish new tests for entrance and for exit out of remedial education. Would you tell us what they are? I think it was, uh, I was quoted uh, in the press about this as, as it being historic. Uh, you and I know that for almost three decades, uh, we have worked in an environment of constantly changing our testing program and always never really being totally satisfied with where it was. Yeah, uh, the, the resolution that you referred to that was passed by the board last month uh, indicates uh, a series of new initiatives, starting with a composite profile of students for admission that would include but not be restricted to things like high school average, high school standing, the depth of the college preparatory courses that a student has, maybe the type of high school, and also including an SAT or an ACT score. Uh, you know that uh, the dominant number of our uh, students in our baccalaureate programs today take the SAT, and many of them are doing quite well and at the board meeting last month, I indicated that some of our campuses are now above the national average. What we're going to use that SAT score for, along with our other profile indicators from uh, high school, is to assess whether a student is ready for baccalaureate work or needs to be remediated. If the student needs to be remediated on the basis of, say, the SAT score, then we will provide a new placement test, uh, which we are in the process of deciding upon. We've sent out an RFP widely to a number of testing organizations. And that placement test is going to be specifically in writing ability and in reading comprehension. That placement test will determine where a student is placed in remediation, the treatment that that student will have, 
And at the end of that treatment, that same test with appropriate changes uh, at the end of that process will serve as an exit out of remediation. Well, that's the dramatic change because we haven't really had a, uh, an exit test for remediation, and that was part of the problem that we had at uh, Osters Community College a couple of years ago. That is correct. This is the first time the university will impose an exit uh, criteria out of remediation. But I think as important, we now have a set, a confidence set, that the kinds of examinations and the manner in which they're deployed and the security issues that we've had some concern with are all going to be dealt with. And I think it's going to be much more student friendly, Herman. I think that students are going to progress through the system in a much more effortless way and without uh, some of the dissonance that was there before because of the nature of how we treated some of these issues. The problem of remediation, of course, we all recognize, and the Schmidt Report spells out in great detail, arises because of the uh, problems in elementary and secondary schools. And we're now working on a program to work with the Chancellor and the President of the Board of Education to uh, help in that area. You want to tell us yes, about it? Yes, uh, Chancellor Rudy Crew and I have had a series of conversations and some meetings where we have come to an understanding of setting up a project team that would be uh, chaired uh, by an individual appointed by Rudy Crew or the Chancellor of the uh, CUNY system uh, with members of the CUNY system, members with the New York City uh, Board of Education uh, to look at two major areas that we are deeply uh, connected to. One is the College Now program, a very innovative program where uh, CUNY uh, faculty work with uh, the New York City Public uh, High School faculties to get an early interdiction program done uh, as early as the 10th grade where we assess students readiness for college level work and interdict with a series of programs. Right now we're in about 73 high schools. It's our intent through this collaborative effort to really expand to the 213 high schools So that we exist. begin working with the students in the um, 10th grade, testing them then to make sure that when they graduate, they will need less remediation. That's, That's right. And we, the data that we have since that program was started uh, indicates that we're on the right track. By identifying the sh uh, basic skills deficiencies that the student has and giving them the appropriate environment to shore those skills up and to provide the opportunities to test them, uh, the student sort of gets a sense of what the culture of a college environment is like, gets a sense of what our expectations in a university community are like, and those students do remarkably well when they hit the, uh, the university campus. The other issue that we're deeply concerned about and something that you Let's hold that up because we have some announcements. We'll talk about that soon. It's impossible! Actually, Coach, it's not. See, Jimmy had to travel a distance of 90 feet. He reached an average speed of 15 miles per hour. The ball left two seconds later than Jimmy and had to go one and a half times the distance. If education is important to you, talk to your child's school about raising academic standards. Call 1-800-38-BE-SMART for a free booklet. And be a big league parent. enabling it to reach the destination at a much quicker rate. Did you factor in the wind speed? We're back with Dr. Matthew Goldstein, who is the new chancellor of the City University of New York. You were telling us about the second program with uh, Dr. Rudy Crew. There's a very serious problem in this city that you know in the next few years we're going to lose a considerable number of teachers that are going to lose, leave the system. And in particular, we have a concern of not having enough teachers that are trained in science and in mathematics. And the City and University provides a large percentage of the teachers. A very in the large, system, right? a very large number of teachers that go in and we really have an obligation to work with the system uh, to make sure that the teachers are there and that's going to be another program that we're going to work with uh, uh, Chancellor Crew on. Do you support this uh, concept that uh, the Board of Regents is talking about that you should not get a degree in teacher education unless you specialize in the subject matter that you're going to be I teaching? think that's critical, Herman. Okay. I think it really is critical. If you're going to walk in and teach a course in trigonometry or a course in chemistry, I want to know that that student, that that teacher is trained in that subject matter. I think that's essential. 
Now, what do you say to the faculty at the City University? I get uh, complaints from uh, a wide range of areas from the faculty. They say, first, that uh, they're not being adequately consulted. They say that uh, the salaries are too low, that there are too many adjuncts, uh, that uh, the resources are not available, that the uh, money has been cut from the budget, and all kinds of uh, similar complaints. What, what do you propose to do? To the first with? thing I would say to your viewers is that this university has a great faculty. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't hear about this in the press, but uh, our faculty in this university across the campuses have won just about every coveted award that uh, is, is available, Pulitzer Prizes, Nobel laureates. When I was president of Baruch, we had a fellow win the Nobel Prize uh, in economics. Uh, these are men and women who are probably some of the most highly skilled, highly thought of scholars and teachers that you're going to find anywhere. And so that's the first thing I want your viewers to know. Secondly, many of the complaints are justified. We have lost a considerable number of full-time faculty over the last dozen to 15 years. We've all, at a point in our history, we had twice as many full-time faculty as we have today. So does we that are, mean the, the, the class sizes are larger now? Well, class sizes are larger, and when we talk about teaching power, the blend between full-time teachers and part-time teachers has shifted much more to part-time teachers than we've ever had in this university, and I don't think that is appropriate. So what, what do you think? We well, can do? I think that we have to become advocates for this university with uh, the governor and the mayor, and I know that you've had conversations and I've had conversations and we've had conversations together, and I think that uh, the position that the governor has taken and the mayor has taken is that they want to see a strong city university and they understand that that starts with a strong faculty, but they want to see us doing some things as well uh, to really create an environment with our own uh, skill, our own intellect, our own experience in shoring up some of the deficiencies, and that's some of the things that we're doing. Now, what do you say to the students? There are students who, are, who say that there's a secret plan here um, that is, uh, comes from the governor and the mayor to close down parts of the university, and it's for that reason that there are plans to make it more difficult for them to enter the university. I would say that there are no such plans. I know that you don't have plans. Okay. I certainly don't have those plans. What we want to do is to provide the most fertile environment for learning. Our obligation is to assist our students in achieving their fullest potential and achieving their dream. Nothing that we do should be other than to think about how to create an environment for learning that will allow students to realize their fullest potential. This university is going to stay open. It's going to stay open to students who wish to study, and it's our obligation to provide the environment where they're going to be successful. As a matter of fact, I say that if our plans work out, especially the College Now program where we help the students while they're in high school, many more of them will graduate from high school and many more of them will be coming to the city university. To rather, rather than to shrink, the university will be expanding. Well, we, uh, it's very clear that that's going to happen. If you look at the demographic patterns, not only in this city but around the country in the next few years, we're going to see more and more students graduating high school and certainly with the new regents requirements that are being imposed in the high schools, uh, we're getting a better prepared student, more students are going to graduate, and our numbers are showing it as well. Retention is going up, graduation rates are going up, and our students are now being uh, graduating uh, in, in large numbers, going to some of the best graduate schools, best professional schools, getting into some of the most coveted training programs in business and industry. The value of the degree is very fundamental to the student's success ultimately. And that's another thing that we have to work on. One of the things that I found uh, surprising when I served on the Schmidt Task Force was that they pointed out that we don't have, as opposed to SUNY or the uh, University of California, we don't have at the City University any first or second tier colleges. Do you think that criticism was valid? And if so, 
uh, what can be done to change the situation. City University does not have an Ann Arbor. It doesn't have a Madison, Wisconsin. It doesn't have a Chapel Hill. It doesn't have a Berkeley, and it certainly deserves to have it. Certainly the faculty collectively in this system would warrant the ability to, to build such a thing. I think the way that we have to do it, Herman, is to, to understand that our campuses are very close to one another and that we can create what I call a flagship environment around very, very strong programs that exist at a set of our institutions. And then when we properly capitalize them, when we properly provide the resources for instrumentation, for graduate assistance support, well, give for me an equipment. Example. Give me an example of what well, you Well, here's, here's a good example. When I was at Baruch, there are a number of truly first-rate programs at Baruch in accountancy, in finance, in computer information systems. With more resources put in, with better management of those resources, with utilizing some other faculty from the university to help support those programs, those programs can reach, I believe, nas national stature. The physics program at uh, City College, its biomedical program, its architecture program, its um, uh, engineering program, the program in radio and TV uh, at uh, Brooklyn College. Many of the people working in this facility are products of that particular program. These are truly first-rate programs that need to be supported in a way. We have to find a new financial model about how to do that, and we're, we're now thinking through could some the, of those. Could, could the alumni help to um, bring us more resources? It is absolutely critical. Baruch College is a transformed institution today because of the large number of very prominent alumni that came back and said, we want to be involved. And they weren't involved before Herman because they didn't believe in the institution. They thought the institution went astray. We have to bring back the extraordinary alumni that are working in, in areas of business and commerce, in science, in the law, in not-for-profit cultural organizations. Uh, we need to bring these people back and get them as partners as we change and move City well, As a matter of fact, uh, we're working now in developing a group of top business leaders uh, through oh. Lou Rudin, the Association for Better New York, right. to ha work with us in the uh, different colleges. Would you tell us what you intend we, to do with them? We are uh, working, you're right, with, with men and women who are graduates of this college and others who are not that will be working with you and me to understand our challenges and help us to moderate our thinking, refine our thinking, become advocates for this university, and provide access to institutions and people that you or I may not have access to to assist us in meeting some of the formidable uh, problems that we have to deal with. And in also this to help the students get a job when they graduate. And it's absolutely. really important. That's very fundamental to this. Because the reality is that uh, um, we have a tremendous number of top jobs in the city, and uh, I want to make sure that our students, when they graduate, move into those opportunities so that. Uh, uh, they can make a contribution to the city, as others have done. City University has to break the barriers that separate it from society, and this is, there's no better way to do that and to create pathways for our students to have successful careers. One of the things that bothers me is that we have found in limited studies that uh, we don't get the students at the city university uh, from the top high schools like Bronx Science, Stuyvesant, Townsend Harris. Uh, what could be done to... Uh, increase those, the number of students who come to us. Well, getting back to your point about a flagship uh, institution and my idea about a flagship environment, I want to kick that up a few notches and create a university honors program. And I think that university honors program has the great capacity to draw into City University the kinds of students that you're talking about. The students from Bronx Science, from Stuyvesant, from Hunter High School, from some of the better private high schools. This university has such, great, such depth and such resources that the students who we get from, this, from these kinds of high schools will have an extraordinary opportunity uh, to really f realize their fullest potential. And we should be doing it. Okay, if you had your way, um, 
what do you, what's your vision of what the university would look like 10 years from now if your plans were carried out? I think it's, it's going to be a university that will have much greater connections with communities uh, that it doesn't have right now. I think the university will continue to have a student population that will reflect the rich diversity and ethnic and racial balance in the city. I think it will be a university where a degree that is conferred will be a very highly valued degree that our students will be able to have access to the best jobs, to the best professional schools, to the best PhD programs. A university where a student, when they graduate, will say, I graduated Hunter, I graduated Queens, I graduated Borough of Manhattan Community College, and I'm as good or better than any of the institutions that I'm compared with. Well, that's that's what I want to do. Well, that certainly is a vision which I share and which uh, I will work to help bring about. Thank you for being here with me, and uh, we'll see you next week. You can reach us by email at our website, www.cunytv.cuny.edu, or write to us at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. We look forward to hearing from you.